Look at us, Anthony. We're on the road in two separate places it's today. How exciting is that? Yes, I'm where you are. Are you where? Where are you? Where I'm at? Where we're at the same place, but we're different. We're in different places, but we're at the I same think place. You're here and I'm there. So let's get the show started. I'm Anthony. Welcome to No Vacancy Live. That's my friend Glenn. You're watching the number one show in hospitality. Hey, everybody. Glenn Hausman here with the one, the only, the incredible Anthony Melchiori. Look at us out on the road doing fun things still, right? Uh, yeah, if sitting in a conference room uh, talking about uh, stuff, uh, uh, marketing wow. stuff, yeah, that's fine. Actually, I'm here just because I haven't I haven't been with my friends who own the marketing company, uh, Julia Mark, in a long time. Yep. So we're going to have lunch to catch up. Ah, oh, that's fun, and uh, they do great things over there at Alternatives. Go check our Checking In with Anthony and Glenn podcast library for a great show we did with them in fall of 19, I believe it was, going back that far. Dude, yeah. dude, you, 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 I can't believe you would even remember what, what season we were in, let alone <laughs> – <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's when it was. Uh, it was. Uh, it was. Uh, it was a great podcast, and I really remember. I, I just love the depth and branding. But all right, so I'm at an event today. I'm at the NEWH regional event down here in the Washington D.C. area at the Marriott Bethesda North, which is uh, which is behind me. And it's so great to see all of the design community, Anthony, getting back together, talking about the future. I had our uh, our good friends from Hit on the panel today. That great construction company with all of the uh, the cool uh, video stuff that they do to help project managers. We looked at drone technologies. We spoke to um, Dave Walsh, who does Marriott's uh, modular construction. So really a fun event. Everybody's going over to a trade show now, but it's great to see people out interacting and getting business done here in DC. Does it seem as busy as normal or is it or is, is the attendance off? I think that this is uh, a little bit of a different event because it's a regional event and a lot of people are just coming over as opposed to having to get on airplanes and make big commitments to it. So this event seems to be going very successful. I'm also looking forward to being part of the uh, NEWH's annual meeting in February in, in Seattle. That should be a whole lot of fun. We're going to be doing all sorts of stuff in relation to that and are relaunching our hotel design comps. The panel is good, Michael. Uh, we really enjoyed it. I think you guys are going to enjoy today's show. Because we're gonna we're gonna be talking with uh, Brian Sparacino, and he is the CEO of uh, Rebel Hospitality. Let's bring him in right now, out of uh, out of I think you're uh, based out of New York, right there, Brian? Yeah, I'm headquarter office in New York. Hello, hey. gentlemen. All right, uh, that's that's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being with here, with us uh, here today. How are you feeling today? What's going on with you? Your general feelings about hospitality today, as we're about to hit September? Well, it's a uh, I wanted to say uh, very enthusiastic. Uh, I think the Delta variant set us back a little bit. Our, our hubs in New York City, so I think we're a little bit more sensitive than other places in the United States. But overall, optimistic. Can't last forever. I think there's a lot of pent up demand in our marketplace and across the country, and people are looking forward to getting back to traveling. Right. And for those, of what you does guys New York look like as far as hotels? You know, we um, I think we were doing a little bit better than than the average. I mean, we we were looking at ending the year somewhere around 30 some percent occupancy and uh, we bubbled up pretty quickly to over 70 percent occupancy. We were able to sustain it, took a little bit of step back when kids went back in school. And now we're trying to figure out what the end of the year looks looks like. What hotels yeah. do you have in New York? The Hotel Fifth Avenue, Mella. Naima, and we're about to announce another one relatively soon that's uh, somewhat of an iconic property. Brian, feel free to announce it right now and blow everything on your side <laughs> so, uh, so we could get the quote. <laughs> uh, listen, it, it, making pre-announcements always je jeopardizes the real announcement. So I know. It's, yeah, for, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> for sure. So for those of you who don't know, uh, Rebel Hospitality is they're really, really focused on serving up what they call the modern lifestyle hotel experience, whether an independent or branded hotels. So you guys work with both established brands as well as other um, brands that you've cre created over there. For um, for example, um, I'm sorry, hold on one second. For example, you guys are are doing like, you have like everything from like Best Western to the Acme Hotel Company and Dana Hotel and Spa. So whole panoply of flavors over there, right, Brian? Well, that, that's uh, that's another Rebel Hospitality. It's in Chicago. Oh, we're, we're based out of New York City. <laughs> sorry, guys. My apologies about that's that. That's okay. Um, all right. So, um, 
He right. just what he just wanted to say planet planet whatever the hell the word you just said. Kind of bleak. Kind of bleak. <laughs> Look it up, people. I'm fresh on the fancy words because my t- kids took the essay. No, SAT. I know I know what it means. I just can't say it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I got accused of wearing a sport coat today, which uh, which I am because I was on stage, and it's so cool, Anthony. Before we get back to Brian, to be me, the one who's super dressed up compared to you today. This is a little uh, this is a little role reversal over here. Well, you know what? It's it's hot in Manhattan. I'm traveling. I'm I'm going to lunch with some friends, and then I have another thing I have to do at three o'clock. And I just want to be uh-huh. comfortable. Are, are you okay with that? I don't know. I'm a little uncomfortable with it. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> All right. So uh, I, I, so let's talk a little bit about what you're up to over there, uh, Brian. What are guests looking for today? And I don't mean specifically because of what we've been going through with COVID, but I mean just in general. I mean the overall trends that you're seeing out there. How, uh, how, are, you, how are your customers wanting to interact with your great brands over there? So it's like the Griffin Hotel and the Kelly Hotel and the, the Redmond Curio Hotel and those types of properties. Yeah, you know, I think it's something that's far different than what guests were looking for in 2019. I mean, it's what does the world look like coming out of coming out of COVID? I mean, if you're if you're looking at it on a go forward basis, you know, guests prefer to have their experience to be based on demand. And I think the days of uh, expecting or anticipating somebody a stranger that's entering your guest room during a pandemic, right? touching things and, and, and moving beyond the, guest, beyond the guest room or throughout the guest room, I think it's a little bit concerning. So I think it's, we have to think about our business a little bit differently. They're looking for thing. They're looking for an experience where they can assemble it. It's not expected. It's not right. predictable. So I, I think that's a part of the world of what we're looking at on a go forward basis. So Right. Uh, hey, hold on one second. Sorry, I'm at this event and people are walking by and uh, waving and That's stuff. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, Michael Weinberger is saying, hey, what type of business are you seeing right now? It's like many parts of the country. Uh, uh, leisure somewhat rules the roost, right? It's the business traveler mm-hmm. is, is a little bit uh, slower to come back. People are still working remotely, so the need for travel isn't as extensive as it was pre-pandemic. Mm-hmm. So the weekends have been fully sold out. You know, you get some traffic on Sunday night, you get some traffic on Thursday right. night, and then you can expect 100% occupancy. That's, that's, real, that's real rough, Brian, because everything that you're accustomed to has been like basically flipped, right? It's usually a no Monday question. through Thursday business and not a weekend business. How do you process that, adapt to it, adjust to it to keep everybody, you know, in, in the black as opposed to running into financial issues? It's the staffing piece, right? You got to run your labor models micro uh, analytically to make sure that you're not digging a hole for yourself. So you right. staff heavy on the weekends, pull it back during midweek. It's right. a it, it, it's a balancing effect, quite honestly. But, but, but what I'm seeing right now, I'm seeing it across the board, whether it's a five star hotel or three star hotel. Service is at the lowest level. I've ever seen it now, and I'm not just right. hearing if I'm not just seeing it myself. But I'm hearing from everybody, right. at every level of hotel. Uh, I just had a friend that st- went to Hawaii, a five star hotel, one of his favorite hotels. The prices went up triple. I mean, I mean, thousands of dollars a night, and the service was horrific. Restaurants weren't open. People don't care. I'm seeing mm-hmm. that in different in, in in different levels of hotel, and and I've spoke to a a, a president of a ma- major management company, and basically whether it be from them or supervisors, what I hear over and over again is there's nothing we can do about it right now. We don't have enough staff. We're just trying to keep our doors open. Brian, I'm sure you're dealing with the same stuff. What are you, do- what are you doing to still maintain the service standard? You know, on, on the compression days, you're going to get rates that you can get. And it's not like you're going to lower the rate because, you, you, you know, you, you have one less staff member or two left staff members. So what, what are you feeling and what are you doing and what creative solutions have you guys come up with, if any? You know, it, it's difficult. So you have to kind of take that question and break it down based on parts of the country, right? The, the labor piece, you know, outside organized labor, is impossible to find, right? It's how do you staff a restaurant? How do you, how do you staff the hourly positions front of the house, back of the house? You know, it's uh, we went on vacation, family vacation to Hatteras Island, where they right. probably had the most dire staffing situation. And every restaurant you walk into has a sign that says, 
be patient right. with the three people that showed up to work today, right? So you, right. Yeah. So <laughs> expectation is you're gonna, you know, you're gonna wait an hour and twenty minutes for breakfast. You can do all these things. I think the consumer, uh, to a certain extent, has a certain level of understanding. I think where the disconnect comes into play is when you're tripling your rates and now you're at bare bare bone services. And I think there has to be a middle ground with finding solutions, right? Uh, yeah, it really does. And people, but you're you're fortunate enough in the sense that we, that we are able to right now in the hospitality industry reinvent what surf is going to be. But the question is, are is the hotel industry going to be able to meet where the customer wants to be? Well, 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 I was just with the great and powerful Jerry Anzarello and we're, we're working on a, a, a right. Uh, a project, I'll just say that. And he's the first person <laughs> up, up in this project. And he said something that I found really profound and something that I don't think people are going to listen to, unfortunately. We need to, we need not to worry about marketing right now. We need to worry about training. And I think that that is so critically important that we need to stop the bull crap and stop playing that. You know, we just need time. We need time. We need to get back to training. We need to get back to those few people that are showing up, that they're trained properly. And as much as that sign sounds funny, I actually respect and appreciate that sign because it tells me, hey, thanks for being here, but be patient because only three people showed up and we're doing the best we can. That will immediately get me to empathize with your team. That's right. What, what's happening in our – what I'm seeing is what's happening – is we're making believe the boogeyman's not in the room, that it's, it's not existing, that being short-staffed and, and, and not having people to clean and, and service properly, that it doesn't exist. So let's just do our best. Well, doing our best is stressing out our front line, is stressing out our general manager. And if we're just honest with people, I would, if I was running hotels right now, I would actually flip it on its head, start really focusing on training and, and make it, like, like bring the, the guests into it, like make the guests understand in an, almost a fun way to say, hey, this is where we're at. And but right now we're ignoring it from what from my perspective. Right. Yeah, I, I, a lot of valid points. You know, I think I think the part is to in like I mentioned, different parts of the country is actually getting people in uh, bringing employees back on and uh, what we what we're facing is in different areas outside the city is you know those line level employees that we employed and they took a pause during the pandemic collected unemployment reluctant to come back because they were making less and then chose to go in a different industry right. so we're now introducing people that have no hospitality experience require training and you know we're asking them to do far more than we've ever asked our employees to do oh, pre-pandemic. So it's you know there's a patience. Right. Piece. So, so, so there's a couple of things that have to happen there. One, it's not only the training, but it's the empathy of hey guys, no this question. is a career. This is a career. We're going to show you how to do this. But if you're just looking at your job today, making X amount of dollars an hour, maybe you know you, you, you know then that's okay. But this is a career. And if you do this, there's going to be opportunity because there is so everything's flat right now. There's no hierarchy. It's like it's the front desk clerk and the general manager. So so you, there's going to be tremendous opportunity for you. But so so to empathize, I have a daughter right now who's kind of training as a manager uh, and she's having you know challenges. But the, the, the ownership's working with her. So so right now, to me, is we have to acknowledge and I hear it over and over and over again is people got to bear with us. People, this right. is a tough, this is a tough time. And we've got to really try to pay our staff as best we can without breaking the bank and really double down on not only the training, but the empathy and the, 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 the how wonderful this career path is, but we got to, we got to stick it out. We have, we have taken in this industry and other industries, the service industry, we have taken advantage of the well this is how much you're going to make and this is what you're going to do and if you don't like it go somewhere else well now we're on the other end of it and we're like hey we're begging people to work so we've got to change ourselves we've got to change our system we've got to change the way we run companies whether it be a management company a brand or this isn't sustainable yeah no no, no doubt I, I think we've all kind of rested on the fact that, hey, we're not going to be able to find 20. We use a moniker. We're not going to be able to find 20. 
let's find 12 really good ones and pay them like eight, pay them like we're paying 18 or pay them like this 18 salary that we're using for a budget to pay the 12, right? Let's just right. figure out how to highly compensate, incentivize them and get them enthused about what they're doing. So the compensation piece is definitely an important part to it because as we've all have witnessed, the status quo part didn't bring people back to work, right? This is this is an unprecedented labor workforce that in our industry, I don't think any of us in our lifetime has experienced. Well, it's, it's a revolution. Great. It's a revolution. And I was on a fence, and, and Glenn probably has the, the videotape to back it up. For years, I've been saying, I wasn't on the fence. I was on the other side of the fence where for years I've been saying this $15 an hour that everybody was complaining about. I was like, we have to give people a living wage at fifteen dollars right. an hour. If it, it's going to break the banks, you're going to break the hotels. Yes, okay. Maybe it's you're going to have to change things. Maybe you have to change the standard. Maybe you're going to have to have less people. But we have to make sure people are paid properly. And now fifteen dollars an hour, the floodgates is open. And you're like, you know what? You're going to pay me nineteen dollars an hour. I'm going to work forty hours a week, and I'm going to set the standard. So right. I, when we were talking about the hourly wage, and we were talking about taking care of people, we almost put them on the side like they weren't real. Like, yeah, these people, well, we'll decide if they make 12 or 13. You know, and, and just be quiet and sit over there. And it has pissed me off for a very long time. I know when people work with me and I've worked, you know, work, uh, when I've turned around hotels, people never had to come to me for a raise. I would tell them when to expect it. I would make sure they would get it. And if I couldn't give them a raise, I would tell them why. And the mm -hmm. problem is, is we... Is it this community, we don't speak up. We don't we don't communicate with our team. Just sit over there and do our job. And I think it, you know, it, it, it's it's a reckoning of sorts. Yeah, no question. I, I think a reckoning is a perfect description. I, I really do. I, I think it's we're resetting the table for something that looks far different. And from an operations perspective, we we have to understand that certain wages at certain levels are not retaining people and the cost of turnover is exceeding what those raises would, would represent on an annual basis. No, no question. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. I agree with all of that. One of the things that we're trying to do here on uh, No Vacancy Live is to educate owners and operators that they need to figure out new ways to take care of their people. But one of the good things is there's so many more great solutions, Brian, that are coming out there that help with uh, with labor, that help reduce your dependence on labor within the hotel, that do a lot of automation and stuff like that. And I think one of the hallmarks of your brand is figuring out how to use things like artificial intelligence, for example, in order to streamline customer service without having to put as many man hours behind it. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I, that's a part to it, right? It, it's, it's, I don't think it's just artificial intelligence versus being packaged together with automation. Right? No, I, would say it's, uh, I would say it's a, an arrow in your, you know, your strategy. Quiver. In a quiver. No, 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 no question. I, I think the, I think the, I think the umbrella is, automation, right? And then artificial intelligence falls with it with, uh, underneath the umbrella. It's, you know, it, it's a big part to our industry. And quite frankly, because of this labor situation, because of the pandemic, I think it's forced us to think about it a little bit more intensely than we have. It's in, you know, pre-pandemic levels, people, the technologies were out there, but the industry was afraid to take a leap of faith, right? It's what does this all represent? Is a beta? Is it proven? Is it, is it all these things? An important part of our company when we put together the platform, and you'll see on our website, it's it's a it's called Rebel Tech, mm -hmm. is we spent a lot of time during the pandemic when we the hotels were closed or operating as homeless shelters, right? We figure out how to put these things together, and a big part of it is is yielding the automation piece, and the automation piece is you know virtual delivery delivery of guest room keys to your phone. Your phone right. downloads the key, it becomes the app. The app is your commit. Use your command control center, your brain of your hotel. You operate all the services. You can request housekeeping. You can request transportation, late checkouts, all these things where you create this, this virtual guest experience, essentially, so you're not so heavily reliant on specific positions, and there's a harmony that's working between the both. So, you know, we, we looked at, I don't want to say, I know it's a dirty word or industry to say Airbnb, <laughs> But if they can effectively manage inventory and distribution and do it without people in the lobby and everything else, what are they doing uh, differently that that's uh, successful that the hotel industry is yet to yeah. yet to adopt? But uh, there's a lot of parts to it. You know, the, the chat bot 
I think sensation is, is pretty interesting. It's, you know, the chat bots on the website and you look at it as the, as the legacy exchange with the consumer, the consumer was on the outside. They were on your website. They were searching maps, location, prices, all these things. And you couldn't touch that consumer, right? You had to rely on the consumer of calling you or sending you an email. Now your chatbot is like an extended salesperson that goes in and communicates with that guest, figure out what they're looking for specifically, and, and tries to convert them all the way through the booking process. Wow. So I, I think, I, I guess if you're looking at it from a holistic standpoint is, hey, look, this runway that we're in now through the recovery, it's getting longer, right? We expected it to, to shorten. And in certain cities, because of what we're experiencing, it's getting longer. How do we shorten it, right? How do we figure out a way, and you mentioned it, Glenn, is how do we stay in the black, right? How do we stay in the black and how do we not persevere such an extended time frame? And I think technology plays an important part. Well, I think when someone figures out, I can put into a text, like, I don't know, text Marriott. And I say, hey, I want a room in San Antonio on the 27th, 28th, uh, and my budget is 200000 right. a night. And I get an answer in three seconds. I, that's the technology I want. Right. Um, and I think that when they figure that out. But also, I want to caution everyone that when you go to uh, the text, the texting or the bots, or whatever you go to, the person that's cleaning the elevator, the person that's sweeping up becomes the only contact I have in the hotel. So that person better look me in the face. That person better say hello to me. That person better be trained to be a customer service person. What yeah. I am seeing is horrific. I, I, I'm not getting any attention because I'm checking in online. And then I'm walking through the lobby and the person that's taking the trash out, I'm going over and saying, hey, how are you? Good morning. I'm literally trying to brighten their day. Right. And we're ignoring the training for that person. And as you can tell, I am pissed off because our industry is ignoring this. Right. They're ignoring that we have to train, that we have to really teach people why it's important to say hello, why it's important to say have a good day. Just say that. I, I was telling Glenn the other day, I think, on the podcast. I walked in. I bought a, a box ring for my daughter's room. The woman at Mattress Firm was amazing. You could tell she was new. She was pleasant throughout the experience. It was very uh, quick. The supervisor came over to help her. He was fantastic. The delivery people that delivered it were fantastic. They showed up when they were supposed to. They used technology the right way. They sent me a text message saying it would be delivered at this time. It was. It was a perfect experience. And all they did was do their job. They were nice. They were pleasant. And that's it. They didn't buy me balloons. They didn't buy me flowers. They didn't give me an ice cream sundae. They were just made it efficient and they were pleasant. Right. Hey, guys. Hold on one sec, guys. You keep. As I'm saying, make sure you say hello to everybody. Glenn, stop saying hello to everybody. everybody. And I'm in a quiet area, too, just around that corner. A couple hundred people all doing deals, making things happen, getting back to hospitality. And, Brian, you know, um, uh, Anthony makes some really good points on one side. But let's look at some of the, the challenges that we're seeing on the other side. Not every customer is like Anthony Malcari. He's not. They're not always coming in and cheering up the team. In fact, right. I've seen a definitive attitude about guests. But say are, hello. But it still doesn't, de it doesn't right. defend the fact that that the person on your team has got to pick their head up and say hello to people. Agreed. Agreed. But this has always been a problem in our business, right, Anthony? We always we do that test where we go up and down. We see the uh, the housekeeping people in the in the hallway. But it's leadership. Not, it's leadership in our yeah, community question. that is not paying attention to it. It's yeah. the presidents. It's the vice presidents. The senior leadership that is so effing busy being effing busy that they're not understanding that we're going to go out of business if we don't train like Walt Disney World, they train the people sweeping the parks in the 70s because those are the people that get the most attention from the consumer. And we're missing it. And I have traveled since January, Glenn, probably more than anybody else, probably even uh, more than you. I've been on the road. Him saying he got diamond status already. I've been, I've been on, I've been, on, I've been, I've been, I've been in airports. I've been in the airports and in, in, in hotel rooms since January, almost yeah. on a weekly basis, mm -hmm. and it is horrific. Yep. But fortunately not at Rebel Hospitality, right, Brian? What are you doing to combat that? Yeah, listen, it, it's, uh, I don't want to say through the automation piece, but it gives you the opportunity to everybody be in the lobby customer facing, right? It's, it, I think what has happened to our industry is we, we, we've become 
more consumed with reporting. We've been, right. been consumed with checking boxes and we've become less focused on actually dealing with the customer, right? And, and the customer in a positive manner to be able to, to expand upon the experience. I mean, it, it's, a, it's, it's definitely something that has changed over the past 10 years. It is, mm -hmm. it, it's a missing component. It's, I, I don't, you know, I don't like to, to make a draw a similar comparison between hospitality, hotels, and airlines. Like look, look at the airlines, right? They stopped all their training programs and you go on a flight mm -hmm. and you know, what happened to all that great service you used to experience 10 years ago? I would hate to believe that we were going down the same path. On our side, we, wait, 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 we I, will, I will challenge that. I, I fly Delta, and I think the service on Delta has even gotten better. It's. I think the sir, and, and that's uh, Anthony. I respect your opinion. I'm a. I'm an American Airlines person, and, and I won't you know, fly I American flights, Airlines. And I won't fly on Delta. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's that's a, that's awesome. That's funny. <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, let me let, let, let me just get back on track to what I was saying with the, with the guests. You know, you're seeing that on the airlines, right? And um, when it comes to your your hotels, one of the things that I feared that you just mentioned, Brian, is coming true. Anthony and I have been talking about this. I don't know, man, two, three, four years already that we were worried that people were going to use technology as an excuse to supplant people. Brian, you're speaking very notably different. I noticed that you said more along the lines of redeploying people That's right. more customer focused. And I think that is where hotel companies are going to win like yours. How is it working out for you with that attitude? Yeah, working out well. I mean, we're I don't want to say we're taking advantage of the downtime because there's no advantage of the downtime. We're just trying to figure out the best way to emerge in the most successful capacity. We're, we're doing renovations, right, in our new hotels in New York City. We're, we're going to begin thinking through the whole renovation piece. A part of that is how do we how do we reimage the front desk, right, the front desk piece, right. where you're actually in front of the desk versus being behind the desk because we see the desk as a barrier, right? It's kind of like going to the bank or motor vehicles. If the guests were in front of the desk or the uh, employees were in front of the desk, engaging the guests, talking to them, it's more personalized experience, right? And so that's not eliminating the labor piece versus thinking through right. how the technology is able to prevent a front desk agent from putting their face down in the computer the entire time or disappearing into the back. And uh, if we're able to get the automation piece to be able to get people that are managers out of the back office and onto the floor, it's able to give a better experience than what we currently have. So all those components have to factor into what's the next generation. And through that, you know, Anthony, to your point, it's the training piece, it's the scripting, it's the guest expectation. And, you know, we, we have our own training program and it's backed up through audits, like blind audits that come in to review it independently to say if the general manager is on vacation for a week, that it didn't all fall apart the week that he, he or she was out, that somebody was actually there monitoring it and, and the pull through was excellent. I'll tell you the best, one of the best guest service experience using technology. And it's been a few years since I've been there, but I, I studied them pretty intimately was the the montage in Laguna Niguel. I just think that they did a phenomenal job with guest services. I don't know where they are where they are today, but that was that that property and that leadership team just did an exceptional job. So, and, and, and people and I agree with you and people equate I'm not saying you do and I'm not, I'm, I'm I'm not kind of uh, it's a different thought. So I don't want you to think I'm explaining what you're saying away. But people equate star ratings and the price they pay to service. And whether you're in a Best Western or you're in the Four Seasons, the level of like amenities is different. The amenity, the size of room is different. Um, maybe the quality of the sheets are different. But the level of your greeting and the way people look you in the eye and say hello and goodbye should be the same. Yeah, no, and, no and doubt. And that is where I'm kind of, and that's why I'm working with um, with a company to really bring in master classes of, for, for, for how we think about hospitality. It's not just about pushing this button or sending that text. It's about the level of service does not change whether you're a one-star or five-star hotel, okay? The size of amenities and things like that change. 
but greeting should be the same. The way you hire should be the same. And yes, it's difficult to find people in five-star hotels or one-star hotels right now. But I think that in, in a lot of ways, that is a, uh, that's our fault. And I don't mean hospitality's fault, but us as a, as a society, we looked at service people for years and years and years as less than. If you're a doctor or a nurse or a policeman or a fireman, you're special. If you're working in the front desk or serving me a drink, you're not as good as this person. And we treated you that way. And now they say, you know what? F you. And if you don't like it, I'm going to go do something else. Right. That's a that's a really weird thing, too, because um, we've been switching from a manufacturing economy to a service economy for the better part, part of like 40 years now. Right. I think we'd have that figured out. Um, in, but- Europe, in Europe, service is 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 a real is a real career. Being a general manager, being a server, it's a real career. It's seen if you're really good as a waiter in Europe, you're, it's seen as a prestigious position. In America, it's seen like you couldn't do anything else. So you're a server. Right. Yep. So, uh, uh, Brian, uh, l- let me ask you. I was getting to the. Uh, I-, I was getting to the point before we started talking about this particular issue, that um, customers are becoming more complicated, and that comes from the time they're going to book a room all the way through the process. As a uh, as a hotel company focused on independent properties, you know you don't have those household hotel brand names behind you. How are you cutting through all of the clutter out there to make direct emotional connections with guests that get them to want to stay in your properties? Yeah, I think you, uh, you know, we, we, we love our brands, right? We, we manage, we manage brands too. No question. Um, they're successful in doing so. I think they're lagging a little bit behind, quite honestly. It's they're yeah. trying to figure out their identity, right? This, this whole gentrification of lifestyle, boutique and personalization and indigenous to neighborhoods, all these things or an important component to, to what this industry represents moving forward. You can't cookie cutter it. Something in New York City is something that essentially is not going to work in Tampa, Florida, but you got to figure out this piece. So I think that personality piece by location is really important, gives you the freedom and the ability to be successful in that location. And as we come out of the pandemic, I think people are going to look for something that's a little bit more intimate and, and and not controlled, right? Their ability to have that that customized experience, and that's the entire infrastructure of our company of how we're setting things up on the back end. So I hope that that will hopefully give us a competitive edge coming out of the pandemic. Yeah, I I hope so uh, too, because it's really important to make those direct connections with guests now more than ever. So one of the things then that you have to do, and I, I see that as a part of your the way that you're focused on reviews through your technology that you rely on other providers to give you um, to give you a base of uh, reservations. What is the strategy behind that for you to create the right mix of business you get directly versus third party services and stuff? In yeah, third party ser- services, are you referring to uh, OTAs essentially? Yeah, correct. Yeah, it's the you know the, the connection piece as I mentioned it earlier on, on the Rebel Tech platform. We're, we're able to get to that consumer. So, so if somebody books on, a, on booking.com or Expedia, we're still delivering communications through that conduit, right? It's a personalized, that, that's where the door key essentially is going, is, is yeah. through the OTAs. Once we, once we loop them in, that we become connected directly with that consumer and we're able to learn the behaviors and spending right. patterns and market direct to that customer. And that piece is customization, right? It's that that guest has a preference with a high four, if that guest has a preference with a cocktail, what have you. And the technology gives us the ability to record it and then go back after the customer on a book direct afterwards. Excellent. Yeah. Anthony, you look like you were going to say something. Yeah, well, it, it, technology is, is, is obviously taking over. We, I was talking to a friend of mine, um, and we were talking, and he's, what are you doing? I said, well, one of the things I'm doing is I'm working on this podcast with Glenn Houseman called No Vacancy. The next day, he's in his car, he plugged in his phone, our podcast came on. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, Anthony, I don't even listen to podcasts, and your podcast came on. It was our, 500, it was our 500th show. Yeah. And it, it's like, I don't know how that happened, but I'm glad it happened. It's, listen, the, the, again, the underline it, underline it, underline it. Technology is not an excuse to ignore our training for our service employees. We've ignored them for too long. Obviously, I'm not talking about your company, but it is 
it, it, it's like we've given up. It's just, it's, I'm, I, as you can tell, I'm very pissed off about it because I see it every day. It's like we've given up on them. Yeah, but we're going to pay them $18 an hour just to shut them up. You know, just shut them up. Just give them in, put them in the uniform, put them on the floor, and just give them a spray bottle and shut them up. And they're happy, good. They came to work. They came to work today. They showed up on time. All right, thank God. Okay. <laughs> that, that's that's how that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, yeah. It's so it's so so true. Uh, so so Brian, before we wrap up today, I want to talk about where you're going in 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 the future. I know you've got a couple of um, you know, some new properties coming. How are you thinking about them? About expanding the company, and what opportunities do you see in the future now that everything so, seems to have been mixed up and rejiggered? Yeah, no, it's we're looking at it from a few different a uh, few different paths. One is it, it, we got to make sure. We're, we're an operating company, right? We're also an investment company, but we're an operating company. And it's that balance between the ownership and operator relationship, I think has really been tested through COVID, right? It's, it, we've, people have come to us because the relationship went south, because there was, you know, lack of trust that maybe there were some bad decisions that were made on behalf of the operator to charge the owner when the owner or investor were contemplating solvency and trying to work through some type of, salvation or structure of the investment. I think that's an important piece. I know it's not a guest centric topic, but it's something that's first and foremost. We spoke about the technology piece that for, that's guest related for a company. What we didn't speak about is the transparency piece. That, that's our core pillar, right? If we engage in assignment or an investor, we put everything on the table. You know, I'm not, we don't censor reports. We don't, we don't hide information. What you see is what we see. So you have access to all the financials and, 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 and the means in which it's delivered to us. And it's all on your phone, right? We developed the phone app. It has the star results, has financials, cash flow, everything else. So you're, we're on the clock 24 seven. So I think coming out of this, what we've learned is, you know, there were some companies, uh, some management companies that had a tremendous amount of integrity, right? They, they worked with their ownership groups to be able to get through it and continue to get through it and some that potentially made some bad decisions. Right. And we want to be that company that, that had builds the trust, the relationships, and the partnerships that's longstanding. Yeah, we don't want to buy a million hotels. Like we don't want to be, I don't want to say we don't want to be 2,000 hotels. I think any third party operator would love to be 2,000. We just want to do it the right way, right? We just want to be thoughtful about, about our growth. Management companies got into a problem when they prevented their general manager from being transparent with the owner. There's so That's many right. times, there's so many times where it's like, oh, oh, don't, don't, you can't talk to the owner or the asset manager until you talk to us. That's happened to me. Uh, I remember a meeting very, very clearly. Problem I yeah, remember problem. clearly, clearly where the vice president of management company said, if you have that conversation, it's going to be over my dead body. And right. anybody that knows me knows what I said. Then there's going to be a dead body in the room. I'm not going to be prevented from talking to an owner. I mean, I'm telling the truth. They ask me a question. I don't need permission to answer that question. It's a very right. transparent question that the owner should know. And if you want to tell them, tell them. But if somebody's telling the owner, it was like, well, we don't need to let them know. Yes, you do. You got to let them know. And that has been a problem in our, uh, since I've been born into this industry, that owners and management companies, uh, management companies try to play owners. And listen, like you said, just give them the facts. If they don't like you, they'll fire you and they'll get somebody else and they're going to fire them too because the facts are going to be the same. That's right. I, I think you're, I think you're spot on. Listen, it's, we, we like to put ourselves on the clock, right? It's, it's the whole, it's the whole uh, having the ability to see everything real time it, it, in our financials. I mean, if you see something, you're an owner and you don't like something, question it. You can send a text message right through the platform, goes to the general manager, or goes to one of the uh, VPs of operation. But that point is very important, right? It's we, we say, you know, be quick with the good news, spend a lot of time telling the bad news, right? Be very explicit with the bad news and peel the bandaid off. Don't hold it. Let's talk through it and never tell the bad news without having a proposed solution, right? Just, right, just and, don't, and don't make the bad news your fault because a lot of times the bad news, the manager or the management company is like, oh, we're going to get blamed for that. 99% of the bad news has nothing to do with the way you manage the hotel. You can't manage the economy. You can't manage that that group canceled. You can't manage that you know that 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 key salesperson all of a sudden decided to, to steal all your business when when they left it's like there's 
there's some things that are out of your control that you can mitigate. But a, a lot of times it's not your fault. And a lot of times what I see is we're trying to hold bad news back that has nothing to do with us. That's right. That's right. It, I oversaw uh, Blackstone portfolios for 10 years. I made a career for myself of being artful and telling bad news. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, I'm not as artful as you are. <laughs> no, listen, you're just truthful. You pick up the phone. Nobody, listen, you draw straws. I, I volunteer to lose. Pick up the phone and just explain it, right? But but always say, hey, look, here's the three options, A, B, or, or A, B, or C. We just wanted to, to, to bring you into the process and make you a part of the decision making. That, that's all. It's a crazy thing about um, the, 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 the human ego is that we always get in a position of keeping things quiet and not being straight up front, even though keeping it to ourselves will create much more of a problem. Yeah in the long term it's better to just hit peel off that band-aid that's yeah. right at some point you run out of runway right yeah you got to take it take off yeah. i'm always like i said and you've heard me say this a million times Glenn. Yep. i love that we have transparent comment cards online i love it it's like there's no, no where to hide we sucked yesterday okay let's suck less today i that's love right. the fact that a, a customer and this this whole thing of you know most comments online are not truthful that's bullshit most comments online are truthful. There is that one person that has too much to do, you know, not much to do in one day that writes a ridiculous comment right. that has nothing to do with, with legitimacy. I get you. But most of the people, uh, educated consumer, can see through that. I love transparency. I love to say I screwed up. My bad. Let's move on. Yeah. A Anthony, I will tell you, uh, based on what you're saying, it sounds to me like it's owners or operators not acknowledging the truth about their property in the in the end and really using those reviews as a learning tool well right? i don't think it has anything to do just with, or only to do with hotels i think right now in our right. uh in, in what's going on in our world it's you know with, with vaccine no vaccine COVID, no COVID, mass no mass it's like people believe in the boogeyman right <laughs> Yeah. That's for, or at least the uh, the candy man at the box office right now. So, Brian, before we wrap up, how about saying something uh, some positive, saying something that you're looking forward to about where we're going right now in this business and opportunity that you see in the future? Yeah, look, it's uh, I think there's a lot of optimism moving forward. I, I, I truly believe that we're all in this together. As an industry, we just have to continue to brainstorm how we get through this unprecedented cycle together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's going to be some great solutions that come out of it. And, you know, we're 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 very we're very thankful for our employees who stayed the course without question. We have great leaders within our company and, and we're looking forward to seeing that light at the end of the tunnel. So I appreciate you having me on and uh, nice. Uh, nice. Yeah, one, one more one more question for you, um, Brian. Um, I haven't asked this question uh, in, in a long time. What have you learned about yourself personally during the COVID crisis that you think has made you a better leader or, as you say on your website, a.k.a. coach? Uh, <laughs> well, I, I think you'll I think you'll hear this a lot from from uh, people within our industry because it's been decimated so badly during the past 18 to 20 months. Mm -hmm. Uh, got to spend a lot of time with family, right? It's we're, we're road warriors, and I'm sure Anthony, based on your your platinum status, you, you share that you share that as well. The the time in quarantine, I think, is was very valuable time, um, and you know you got to you got to figure out how to engage on a different level through Zoom. I think we've all become a masters of Zoom and, and team meetings, and um, you know we're looking forward to getting back to to human connection, like face to face, and and actually being able to solve problems in person. So um, the coaching piece is, is hard to do remotely, but you figure out different ways to inspire people. So. Right. Awesome. Well, Brian, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate you, Brian. you. My pleasure. Thank you, gentlemen. Yep. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, take hopefully care. we'll thank see you uh, in New York City real soon. We should do a remote one at one of your properties one day. We should Absolutely. Be our pleasure. Thanks, thank man. You. Be good. So, uh, Anthony, you know, another great conversation with another great industry uh, leader. There's one question that came up here that I think you um, would be good to answer because it's directed at you. Tim says, I'm a resident at one of your favorite Myrtle Beach locations, the Lancer Motel, which you featured on Hotel Im Impossible. His wife works for them. She feels trapped in this job. In generally speaking, what would you say to people that are feeling trapped in a hospitality? Put department? that back up. Put, put that back yeah, yeah, up. Yeah. I, have to, I have to read it myself. All right. Anthony, I'm a resident of one of your. I'm a resident 
the Lance Montello. My wife works for them, and well, you know, you already know Anthony the story. If anything, it's worse. My wife. Has, I'm not going to answer that question publicly. Uh, right. They have. They my, that person has. That person has my text message. My my cell number. They can call me. They know. I know who so, they are. All right. So okay. So what would you advice would you give for any person that's a hospitality professional that feels as if they're trapped in their job? Listen, nothing in, nothing listen, in regards to that hotel. Listen, at the end of the day, it comes down to the people you surround yourself with. So you don't feel trapped in the job. You feel trapped to the people you're surrounding yourself with. Right. You feel that you're not being listened to. You're feeling you're not being appreciated. You're feeling you're being disrespected. You're mm -hmm. feeling you can't get to the next level. So let's right. call it what it is. It has nothing to do with the job. It has to do with the people that surround you. 99% of the time, the problems you have, if you stop and think about it, it's people around you or it's you. Right. The problem itself, like we're dealing with a pandemic, we're dealing with an economic crisis, we're dealing with all kinds of problems in our world. And right. somehow we get up in the morning and we forget about those things. And the only thing that we're freaking out about is that the person didn't get my coffee order right or my <laughs> wife was pissed off or my kid wasn't listening to me. So it's your surroundings. It's not the world. It's not. It's like if I listen to the morons out in the world right now, that I disagree with, and I, and I consider some of the people I'm listening to morons because they're 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 not listening. Now you can agree, I can agree to disagree with you if you don't want to do something, or if you agree with a political uh, sentiment that I don't. I can have lunch with you and be your best friend, but when you start, you know, just just going off on things that aren't true or don't make any sense. I just take you out of my life. Not that I'm 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 canceling you. It's right. just like I only have a hundred percent of battery a day, and I can't give you anymore. When you want to talk about baseball, or you just want to talk about you know our families, whatever. Fine. If you want to try to convince me to join your cult, I'm not going to join your cult. I'm going to stay here, and we can be friends here. And so, to me, it has well, nothing to do. <laughs> so, so to me, it has nothing to do with the job. It has to do with the people you're allowing into your life and you yeah. know glenn i'm really good yeah. at keeping my network real small you uh, you really are and it keeps things less complicated and more pure and i would recommend to anybody out there there are plenty of jobs open in the hospitality industry go get them they wait are but, but 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 can i say something yes. make sure you do your homework because there's a yes. lot of bad management companies out there there's a, there's some brands out there that are get, going down the tubes that I would not want to work for. So do your homework, reach out to me and Glenn. I can even direct you, Glenn can direct you. There are, because I am seeing, and 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 I, I was with Jerry the other day and I'm telling you, I asked him a question and he gave me the greatest lessons in this one answer that I probably will be talking about. There's like 27 lessons in one answer. And one thing he said, and I may have said it um, before, but he said that I found very, very fascinating. He said, it's not training. I mean, it's, it's not marketing, it's training, but he said, we have to listen. Yep. We have to communicate. Yep. That's, That's exactly it. Way to put it. Yeah. And the thoughtful pauses were absolutely perfect. All right. I think that's a good way for us to uh, wrap up the show today because, uh, Anthony, you've got to go to lunch. I've got to get back to a trade show. And uh, producer Professor Suzanne is apparently being attacked by fire ants, so she needs to go deal with that <laughs> situation. I've <laughs> never seen I've never seen anybody look more miserable in the heat. <laughs> she's, she's yeah, 100, it's 103 degrees, she says. Wait, wait, she, had a, she had a smile on her face. But she, I just like that you just look yeah. so hot. Normally, Suzanne, normally this is where I'd bring you on the show to embarrass you, but I will, I will say for that today. Oh, <laughs> it's She's, right. cell phone. She's muted herself. All right. Goodbye. All right. But, but wait, <laughs> hold on. Hold on. I want to say something right. because yes, I sorry. feel like we can do a whole show on so, how pissed off I am right now. People are just, people are just ignoring everyone. Everyone is just ignoring everyone. I mean, look at us. We were we were so so excited to get back on the road. So excited to see people. Within three hours, we're both sitting having a beer, complaining about everything we were hoping to get back to. So uh -huh. we need to really reset ourselves and appreciate what could have happened, what is happening, and that if we like, I unfortunately was just at a funeral with two two cousins that we had to bury yesterday and 
like what I'm just realizing, they're not here anymore. They're done. And we've just got to appreciate that when we have the opportunity to travel, we have the opportunity to mentor somebody, or we have the opportunity to break bread with someone, feel the moment, appreciate the moment. When you see that server, even that server's having a bad day, do your job to try to make that server have a better day. Right. Like we've really got to commit to basically getting back to being human and humanity because it is absolutely and the only thing you can do is control yourself and the only now that doesn't make the, the fact that you know if somebody tries to take advantage of me i'm not going to stand up for myself right but we've all got to get back to you know just being respectful of our plight you know my brother once said to me he goes if i we had a worry tree and i put my worries on the tree and i put your worries on the tree i'm going to pick my worries off probably because i don't want your worries and right. we just got to understand that people are ju- some people are just better at hiding their shit than others. And we're all going through it. So we just got to be kind to each other. It's, it's, it's that simple. It really is that simple. And one of the things that I've been thinking about, Anthony, I've talked to a couple of friends about this notion that I have, is that we spend so much time in life being taught that we have to focus on the future, the future, the future, the future. There's very little emphasis on trying to live and enjoy the now. And just be open and kind to people today. Well, I think that's what's happening in why people aren't coming back to our industry. They're like, you know what? I'm working weekends. I'm working holidays. The, yep. My supervisor's an asshole. And I, why am I putting myself in that position where the guest is being a problem? The, my supervisor's an asshole. So I'm just going to do something else because life's too short. So I think yep. that's exactly the reason we're doing it. So if you're a manager and you're you're president of a management company, you're executive vice president of a management company, and you think you understand what's happening, you don't. Mm -hmm. Until you're until you go into your hotel and until you truly go into housekeeping, get there at seven o'clock in the morning, go have lunch with them, spend a week, spend a month, spend time on the road, really doing their jobs and understanding why they come to work, understand why their friends decide not to come to work and then put in the program. Cause I haven't heard one management company or one brand come up with something that is new. You hear the same bullshit over and over and over again. I'm done. Sorry. I apologize. <laughs> That's all right. If you're done, that means I'm done. I've just got one more thing to say. Be sure to download the audio version of our podcast. Get it, of course, on Apple Podcasts, iHeartRadio, Stitcher, Google Play, wherever you want to go. It's even on Amazon. That's right. We made a deal with Amazon where they publish it and we get nothing. But at least you get to hear at least you get to hear from it. <laughs> Reach out to us directly at Anthony Hotels. And of course, I'm at Traveling Blood. <laughs> that was funny. That was funny, man. Right? Yeah, I got I excited. I got excited for a second. <laughs> no, nothing to be excited about. All right, we do have a lot of exciting things coming uh, coming in the next few months. So stick around. We're going to be really doing a lot more great stuff. I want to thank you guys all again for your love and support. And remember, you've got one life, so blaze on and be kind to yourself. All right, see you all tomorrow. <laughs>